Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another photography video. Today we're going to talk backgrounds. And if you remember last week I was out in the forest taking some natural backgrounds and these are some of the results I got. I also wanted to show you how to do some abstract, something a little bit different, something a little bit more funky and it's something you could do at home which is water and oil. And if you want to add some color, all I did was change the backgrounds. But let me get back to the, the whole point about shooting backgrounds. Backgrounds are very popular uh, for stock photography. And that's because you could use them in a variety of elements. So the first thing you got to ask yourself is how is this product, how is this image going to be used? How could you use something like this? Now this image, it, it's just a, a cut on a tree. So you see all the rings. It could be used by in many ways. So this one has many growth rings and they're pretty far apart. So that tells you the tree grew really fast. The weather conditions were great. So somebody doing an environmental study, uh, it could also be bought by a lumber comp company or a carpenter, somebody that needs wood, somebody that needs images of, if it's a pine tree, they might need to show what that looks like, the grain, the texture, something like this image. That was a wildfire that came through and burned a whole bunch of trees. That's a background. I could see writing on this, don't do this to your forest, or selling charcoal. I mean, there's a million ways you could use something, well, there's 10 ways you could use something like this. Uh, textures, like this is an old rotted tree. What if you sell wax? The right wax will prevent your wood from cracking. Don't do this to your deck. Wax your wood regularly. All right, I heard that one when I said it. Anyway, you get the idea, there's a lot of things here that that have potential. Some of these trees, the dry cracked wood, it, you can also use this to add texture to a product, something isolated and white, something on that you just want to add that grittiness. So you could use something like the lines on the wood. So for example, I have this image of this driftwood that I found in the uh, California coast a few years ago. And I've sold it um, 97 times in Shutterstock and it's made me $167. I've also sold it over 30 times in Adobe and a few times in Deposit Photos and Dreamstime. So this one image has made me over $200. With these abstracts, they're very simple. All I did was fill a bowl with a glass bowl with water and then added some drops of oil. Uh, I changed the backgrounds with those paper, the different color papers that I used in the first video and if I needed to modify the, the light, I use this. It's my loom cube that you see me using behind my head or on the side just to get get some backlight. It's super bright. You can adjust the color and the tone. There we go. Now it's warm. I use this just to go over the water drops or the oil drops and change how they reflected the light. So that gave me different textures of the same image. By using different color backgrounds, you change the color and the feel completely. A red background has a, a different feel than a blue background. Like these weird red droplets just floating. I think I'm focused on that one. That one's better. Or the blue ones. The blue ones look really funky as well. Let me get this one here. That looks really cool. Just, just a weird background. And then, of course, all I do is go in and clean out. This one has something floating in there. So I go to my Lightroom Develop pick the band-aid and then just go right here and delete that distracting element but that image is perfect as an abstract it actually even looks like it's from like planetary something or deep underground I don't know it just use your imagination things like this that you can't really explain what they are have a lot of potential and I have made a lot of sales with items like this see on this one here you can see on the top part where I use the uh, the loom cube to add light. So a lot of these I took top down. Like this this yellow one is top down, completely top down, a little bit of contrast. Uh, let me drop this, drop the exposure a little bit and maybe drop the vibrance, add clarity and texture. I don't want to add too much dehaze. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll brighten it. So you can play around with these pretty much all you want because it's not something that's going to be identifiable 
you don't have to be so careful when you're editing and processing it because it's abstract, it's random. I'll apply the lens corrections just to get it flat and remove the vignette. If you look on top, there's a couple of distractions here that leaves or dust or ash that's falling down here in the Pacific Northwest. So let me just remove some of these things. And that's pretty much it. There's not a lot of editing, it's not a lot of processing. When it comes to keywords, it's very similar to the ones I've done before. You have abstract, texture, you can add oil, you can add water, mixture, uh, just anything that comes to mind that looks magical, floating bubbles. I mean, it, again, it's unlimited. All you need is 50. And then if you really wanna get it, add some funkiness to it, I have a, uh, a mandala book <laughs> and I put that underneath that had a very shallow f-stop I was at 3.5 and the colorful drawing and the background just popped and because you're shallow the water refracts the, the oil and the water refracts the textures so you don't really get to see the design all you do is see this colorful explosion of color and here there's a, again another that looks like a hair or something I can't tell what that is so I just come in, select it with the uh, Band-Aid in Lightroom, and it magically, uh oh, it didn't disappear. There we go. Now it's gone, you can't even tell it was there. It was just a little something that floated and landed on one of the bubbles. Here's another one, and another one. I probably should do these indoors, but anyway, you, you get the idea. By adding different colorful backgrounds, different textures, uh, I've used like, uh, holiday wrapping paper some gold and sparkles and controlling your light adding the light to the background it'll reflect on the bubbles it'll reflect on these random things and not any image is gonna look the same because these things are constantly moving and evolving you're gonna miss focus on some that's fine uh, I use manual focus because it was a lot easier than the autofocus but these are some funky textures that look really cool they have a lot of potential they have a lot of different uses and I just wanted to share with you something easy that you could do at home you could do anywhere and get more backgrounds out uh, out there for your for your potential for your stock sites not only the natural backgrounds but also your abstracts these are Anybody could do this in their kitchen. You don't need a macro lens. I used it because I have it. The closer you can get, the better. I got some great results with the 50 millimeter 1.4. They blurred the background. If you're top down, you can blur everything else. You can get really good abstracts. Uh, most zoom lenses can get close and can work for something like this. Drop your f-stop. You don't need a lot of, you're top down, so you don't need a lot of depth of field. If you're shooting sideways, the same thing applies. You wanna blur everything front and back so you don't really need the best gear out there to get something like this this is easy it's fun you'll be surprised with the results uh, some of these just look funky it, it's, it's kind of cool to practice and just to play around I, I miss today's of just coming up with random things and seeing if I can make them work for stock this works I've done it before I'm still waiting for more photos in that email that I, I keep mentioning in my stock videos, wellnessphotography at gmail.com. If you want me to review your images, help you in composition, uh, subject matter, anything that might help you understand a little bit more about stock and how to get better at it, go ahead and send me pictures. Every time I have 10 images, I'll make a video. Right now I have about five, I'm waiting for a few more. So as soon as I have more, I'll make a video and maybe that'll help you and other people understand a little bit more about the the game of stock it is a game and the sooner you learn how to play it the better you're going to be at it so thank you very much for watching i'm going to leave this here don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video bye